now that the community libraries project is underway, it's probably a great time to finally do the acquired books tag. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to a fictional escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is a quick book tag. I saw this tag on Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads channel probably about 12 months ago now and I've had it saved since then. So this is the acquired book tag and I thought why not do this while we've got a community library project happening while I haven't been buying as many books and give it a red hot go. This one was originally done by Kristen over at Enter the Book, and if I can find the original video, I will link that one down below, and Andrew's will also be linked down below if you're curious on checking those out. Before we jump into the tag today, make sure you check in the description box down below for links to my social media or Discord should you want to come along for the ride. All right, it looks like we have about nine questions plus tagging people. I'm probably not going to tag anyone at the end because it has been 12 months since I've seen this tag even done, but... If you want to go ahead and do it, it is an open invitation for the class of 2023, 2022. If you haven't done it, go ahead and give it a go. Question number one is, do you plan your book purchases ahead or impulse buy? I, so this has changed for me over 2023. I used to be a big on impulse buying. And now that I'm reading probably 80% indie books, I tend to go down the digital route and I'll impulse buy on digital because they tend to be significantly cheaper. Also, the author gets more of the proceeds from a digital book than a physical book. And I will purchase willy-nilly digital books. Whenever I see a new one coming out that I might be interested in, I will pick it up. When it comes to physical books, I will tend to plan those out or I'll read the digital copy. And if I really like it, I will then go ahead and purchase the physical. Without purchasing physical books a lot, in 2023 i've stuck to some indies i've been gifted some review copies which has been lovely but mainly the ones that i've purchased for myself have been indies that i've enjoyed reading digitally and i've bought them when i had the money to or they've been some special editions from the broken binding or kickstarters so i kind of do both i impulse buy on e-reader a lot because i read a lot on my kindle and my phone and the Physical book purchases are more planned. Question two, how do you decide what books to buy? So I think I sort of answered it in the first question. I'll buy books on my Kindle. There are so many. I go through little spending sprees where I'll spend maybe 20 bucks and get a handful of books, you know, five or six books, depending on how much they are from indie authors, because that is a viable way for me to collect those stories. When it comes to deciding on physical books to buy, I think when I started this channel, it was more, that's pretty, that sounds good. I followed another booktuber or influencer that has said good things about this one, so I'm just going to pick it up. When you saw my shelves towards last year, a lot of those books were influenced by other booktubers or book reviewers and now getting into the world of indie there are many more books that i do want to read but i will do that digitally and then decide on what books that i'm going to have on the shelf because only so much shelf space that we have in any given scenario and uh, rachel and i are moving across the country and we'll be moving back in five years so any books that i purchase do have to come back in some way shape or form uh, number three what is your philosophy on where you shop online versus in person large versus small physical digital or audio new versus use etc i don't really have a philosophy per se if i'm buying a trad published book and i know there are specialty stores around me I'm more likely to spend the extra, say, 5 to $10 on the book to support those small, local, independent stores. And the reason for that is that that's how we keep those specialty stores alive, is by spending that extra money. Uh, not everyone is in a financial position to do that. We do have things like Amazon, where it is much cheaper to get those books. And I know that a lot of us don't want to support the big conglomerates but it is financially more available for more people and also ships a lot more countries than the small independent bookstores do. If I'm in a city where one of those bookstores exists, I will go into a bookstore. If I'm looking for something in particular and I can't find it in a regular bookstore, I will tend to go online. We are lucky enough to have a couple of big book retailers or online retailers in Australia like Booktopia. And I'll sometimes go on there, but it really depends on, on what I'm looking for and what is available. For my indie books, uh, same with the last two questions, I tend to buy digitally and then I'll try and buy 
from the author direct if they have a website this tends to be the most expensive route to go because of shipping costs more so than the cost of books themselves but you do tend to get a nice personal touch with those books you might get them signed i'm thinking of ll mccray in this instance where i ordered the complete set of whatever was available and each one comes signed and with a bookmark so you get that personal touch even though you're spending a little bit more and if i know an author has their own website i will save up for those book sets so my next one that i want to get is the war eternal series by rob j hayes and i'll wait until i have enough money for both the books and the shipping from rob's website himself i don't think there's a right or wrong way to purchase books everyone is going to find a way that suits them and that's okay when it comes to new versus used i really like used books i don't necessarily love my books to look clean on the shelf it looks better for the aesthetic of the shot that you see there. I don't necessarily love hardbacks to read. I tend just to have them to look at and I'll read those books digitally. I am losing my voice, so I apologize for the rest of this video, but I love a beat up old copy, a beat up mass market paperback found in a secondhand bookstore. I love a broken spine. I love a pre-loved book. So I'm all about getting used books, but they don't look as good on the shelves. So I need to do a bit of a balance when it comes to that. Question four. What about the little free libraries? What do you think about them? Have you used one? Why or why not? What a coincidence that this tag happened to have this question in it at the time where I'm running a community libraries project where I'm looking at getting more indie books out into the world. I'll put the, the uh, video information up on the top if you want to do click it, but I have used little libraries before and I am an avid believer of these little street libraries. These are ways where people can borrow books without having to have a library card. Sometimes in Australia, you have to have a citizenship to get a friggin' library card, and which is just ridiculous to not be able to borrow a book. So these little libraries give more opportunity to more people to go ahead and borrow these books. I've only taken one out, I think, in my lifetime and put it back in a separate location, but I'm a really big believer in any books that I'm unhauling, I'll try and put in these little libraries so that people can access them for free and I'll try and spread it out a fair amount. But yes, I do have a project running at the moment where I'm looking at getting donations of indie books from authors, uh, readers, and reviewers. The link will be down below to that wish list if you do want to go ahead and donate, you're more than welcome to. And where that goes, 100% of the books donated to that project will be going into little libraries across Brisbane. Number four, how do you feel after acquiring a book? Do you share it like in a book haul or a diary? I feel pretty bloody good after acquiring a book in any way, shape or form. It is such a dopamine hit. I can see my wife rolling her eyes at me from across the, uh, the room there. And sometimes when you're feeling just a little bit down, you know, you just go into a bookstore and you put four or five in your cart and that's just what happens. It just happens that way. I can see, Rachel's now counting on her fingers how many books I've purchased in the year. I was meant to purchase zero books. So I do share them when I was doing them regularly and I was irresponsible with book buying. I would do a book haul per month. This year I've only done the first six months because I only have about 20 to 25 for six months of the year and I'll probably do one at the end of the year with all the special editions I've got. I will have purchased significantly less in the second half of the year but I have got some broken binding editions on the way which are pretty exciting and I'll show them off. So I don't keep a diary. I think my transaction history on my bank says enough on how much I spend on books and I don't need to see it at me. I tried in 2022 to put the cost of every book that I purchased and once it got into like the 2000 mark I had to stop. I didn't want to know anymore about how much I'd spent on books but I will normally share them in a book haul. Question number six, how do you feel looking at your books that haven't been read? Does it matter if it's currently a lot or a little amount? Oh boy, I would say probably about 70% of the books I own physically I have not read. When I first got into booktube as a viewer rather than a person creating content on the platform, I was influenced a lot by quite a few booktubers and I went out and I bought anything and everything under the sun. If it sounded good, if it looked good, I was there. I have quite a lot of book ones if you ever see my shelves when I set them up next year. I'm going to try and do it mainly indie with what I have um, available for viewing but I have a lot of book ones because I was so excited about books. Uh, I don't mind, I actually quite like it, it's very exciting to continually have something to read. 
for people who don't know, I essentially work an eight hour day, normal work job, a nine to five, if you will. That takes up 40 hours of my week. I probably put another 20 to 30 hours into book stuff, whether it be working on the website with Rachel, talking to clients, talking to authors, reading books, reviewing books. I also write for a blog called epicindie.net. <clears throat> my life outside of work work is book work. And this is the job that I love to do, not so much the one that pays. So I don't mind that I've always got a huge TBR. There is always something exciting about having a huge stack of books to read. I absolutely love it. And I'm happy to keep calling myself out on it for the rest of my life because it's never going to change. Question seven, how do you decide what number of unread books is the right amount when there are no more books to be owned? Uh, fantasy, sci-fi books, I they're big series right people just write big series in these genres i'm never going to read all the books that i want to read but i will be collecting them at some point in some way shape or form so i never it's you never have enough books in my opinion maybe when i have a library like the technical thousand physical books maybe then i'll slow down but next year is going to be a big book buying year for me i can just feel it in my bones uh finances depending Number eight, do you have a TBR game or process for reading them? So I am very much a planned reader. I would probably say 97.8% of my reads are planned. At the point, so the time of filming is the 17th of September, 2023. At the time of filming, I have planned up until August of 2024 for my reads. And I try and incorporate series that I have own in some way, shape or form. Um, I've got a couple that I own on audio which are going to be priority audio reads for me next year i try and keep on top of the ones that i'm excited about but also making sure that i am dipping into that backlist for at least one to two series per year just to get through some of the ones that i really do want to i don't have a game so much because i'm not a mood reader so the games don't really work for me if they come out of a jar i'm gonna read it but i tend to be pretty much a planned reader that's my process keep planning all plans, all lists, all the time. The last question is one that Rachel's going to laugh at across the room. Question nine, do you have a book buying problem? If so, what is the nature of it and can it be adjusted? I have a book problem and I will never stop. It's just, <laughs> stop it. It's just, yes, <laughs> I have a problem and I don't see it changing anytime soon. Uh, question 10 is tag two or three others to ponder their book buying process. I'm not going to do that. If you want to do this tag, go ahead and do it. Shame yourself. I've shamed myself. I feel like it's only fair if you want to jump on board to do that as well. And there is just a little tagline, number 11. It says, know you're awesome just as you are. Being a book lover is amazing, which is 100% correct. Being a book lover is amazing. It makes me love life if that probably sounds corny as hell but i love exploring different worlds i love exploring different thematics through books and that's not something that will ever change i lost it for a little while while i was doing some academic stuff and i'm so glad that i'm back and since finding booktube i've just never had a second thought about it i have always read and i plan to always read and love the written world that was the acquired book tags make sure you check out andrew's tag and also the original there from Chris, and I'll put them both down below. If you like the content, get one of those. If you want to see more of it, click subscribe at your will, and I will catch you in the next video. Ciao.